In the last round of the Air Things Masters, Pragnananda was up against the very strong Russian GM Vladislav Artemyev. Artemyev is a man of few words. He is like super strong in rapid and blitz in shorter time formats. And just about in every Champions Chess Tour, he makes it to the top eight. So Prag facing him in the last round was already not going to be an easy game. Pragnananda opened the game with 1 e4 <coughs> and Artemia responded e5. Knight to f3, knight c6 and we had the Italian on the board. This is Pragnananda's favorite weapon against e4 e5. Knight f6, d3, bishop e7. In this tournament, bishop e7 has started to gain some popularity over the standard move bishop c5. Uh, black players are finding it, some new ideas here. <coughs> castles. Castles. And now Prague went rook to e1 over here. There are other moves also possible in this position, but rook e1 is clearly the most popular. d6. And now... <clears throat> in general, in such position, white tries to gain some queenside space. At the same time, black's threat is knight a5. Now that the e5 pawn is defended uh, after d6. And to win this important bishop. So a4 makes a lot of sense. h6, a5, trying to gain more space there. a6. And now white plays knight to c3. The other option is to put your pawn on c3 and then go for this knight d2, knight f1, knight g3 ideas. But Prague goes knight c3. And knight c3 makes more sense when the bishop is back on e7. Rook e8 and now h3. Bishop f8. And over here, I thought Pragnananda could continue with knight e2. And then knight g3. Like let's say if d5, ed, knight d5. Knight g3 and we have an interesting position on hands. But he played d4 and I think it was a little too soon because now black can equalize after takes, takes. And now what should black play here? Try to think black to move. Pause the video and figure out. Black played a very nice move here and I really liked it. Artemio equalized the game with d5. And it seems like d5 is very well controlled, but after let's say ed5, there is rook e1, queen e1, and knight d4 when you lose a piece. The other option is knight takes d5, but then after knight d5, now you can't still take with the pawn, so you take with the bishop. And now knight takes, knight takes, and c6, and you lose material here as well. So... Actually, d5 makes a lot of sense, but Prague took on d5, knight d5, and now did not take back on d5 here, which is a mistake, but first began with knight c6. b takes, e takes d5, rook e1, queen e1, and cd. And that's how black has equalized out of the opening. Okay, Prague goes back. The only thing that Prague is very happy about in this position is that the a6 pawn is weak, and he can keep pressure on it c5, bishop came to f4, bishop b7, queen c3, bishop c6, rook d1, all very logical moves, bishop b5, rook took, took, and now went queen e5. So he's putting pressure on the d5 pawn, giving up his a5 pawn. Maybe Artemiev could have played uh, d4, and here Prague could have continued queen to c7. And uh, white is still putting slight pressure, but Artemia went queen takes a5, and now Pragnananda took with the rook. Queen a2, and rook went back to the d7. Actually, this position, there was a very interesting line, which I analyzed. I mean, he played g6, trying to activate his bishop here, but there was an interesting line. You play queen b1, king h2, queen c2. It's very sharp now. I go queen d5. Trying to attack a8 and f7. Queen c4 only move. You take on a8. I take on f4. Check. g3. Queen takes f2. And queen g2. Black seems to have uh, good compensation here. So this was what could have been played. But I think Artemia felt that his position is fine. Just 
you know the queen is defending this pawn here maybe if he can get the bishop to g7 then c5 would fall he would take b2 and eventually they would be able to come to an equal position but prague now played queen e4 and this was an important moment in the game because now the rook is hanging and it's not so simple to figure out what to play uh, i mean the rook is not hanging as such but there's pressure here so a very natural move is bishop g7 but turns out to be the crit critical mistake of the game. The right move here is rook a4 hassling the queen and after queen e3 now going back here and trying to hold on here and okay white is going to be slightly better after takes takes but black should be able to hold this. When he went bishop g7 it was not clear what's wrong and try to find a powerful move here for white white to play try to pause the video and figure out actually it's not even clear what to do i mean c5 pawn is slightly weak but how do you attack it i mean if you play bishop d6 here then i'm just snatching this pawn Prague found this move b3 which is so good because the threat now is very clear I want to go queen d5 okay now that the queen is not controlling this diagonal attack this and when you go rook f8 i want to play bishop d6 attacking the rook and it's so simple but so difficult to meet and also i mean possible was c4 here which is also an interesting move same concept but b3 is just stronger rook f8 was played here and now prague went bishop d6 very interesting move uh, you could also play calmly with g3 because you have complete control over the position. Then queen d5, then bishop d6. And white is winning there as well. Uh, but he played bishop d6 and I think Artemiev had prepared this move queen a8. And his point was that if you take, I'll take and you take back, I'll try to hold in this endgame. Although white is better. But Prague kept the queens and here black had to be tricky. I mean, he's already in trouble. His rook is attacked. And if he moves the rook, f7 is falling. So what to play? Try to think, what would you do here? Okay, so Artemiev played the move queen e8, which is a mistake. The right move here was bishop d4. And very difficult to find. Because if you play bishop f8, I give you a check, king h2 and bishop e5. And you lose the uh, queen. So you can't take on f8. Let's say you decide to play king h2 first, just trying to go away and take this next. Then queen e8 and rook e7, queen c6. You go here and now queen d5. The point is somehow black has activated himself. You take on f8, there is still bishop e5. And in this tricky way, Artemiev could have hung on. Also, queen h6 is possible here, which gives white a small advantage. But queen e8, mistake, rook e7, queen a8. And now came this nice little move, rook c7. Once again, recreating the threat. And now a move like bishop d4 does not work. Because I'll just go g3 like in the previous example. And now my rook is also not kind of loose on d7. Now it's well protected on c7. So Artemiev here played queen d8. And Prak said, well, that's a free piece here. Because my free uh, exchange, so my rook is guarded. Queen takes f8. And now after rook b7, uh, Pragnananda had won. Because rook b8 is a massive threat. Also b5 pawn is hanging. And if you move your king away, then f7 is hanging. And in this way, uh, Pragnananda beat Artemiev in the final round. Just a look at Pragnananda's performance in this tournament shows that he played very well. He finished uh, 11th in the tournament. But look at his wins. It came against Carlsen, who finished second. Artemiev, who finished third. Esipenko, who finished fourth. And uh, also against Aronian and Kostyanyuk. So five wins for the youngster. He could have even qualified if he had gotten one more win, but truly well played. And uh, we wish Pragnananda the best in his future events. He made a big impact 
in this tournament.